Greetings everyone, and welcome to Animated Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Ruby, Volume 9. Yep, Ruby, Volume 9, Episode 9. Welcome back to the Dojo. I'm Ryu. He's Age. We're back for more Animated Night in the Dojo, and this is, yeah, Ruby, Volume 9, Episode 9. Uh, <laughs> Ruby made a choice last week. Yeah. Leave it at that. The cat showed his true colors and is now inhabiting Neo's body. And the rest of the team is wondering what the heck they're going to do. So that's where we're at. And they save Ruby before she gets remade or whatever. But, you know, that's probably sure. on their list is to go to the tree then at this point. Yeah. It was actually a good thing we watched uh, last episode when we did because literally like 20 30 minutes after we finished recording i got one of the freaking spoiler videos of the cat possesses neo as the freaking tagline and that's why we record on the saturday <laughs> oh man so anyway yeah <laughs> We really hadn't been getting anything, but I guess Age finally got one. But that's that was one of the major things that happened last week, obviously. So uh, that, that's why we record on Saturdays, especially for this show, because this show is rampant for spoilers for whatever reason. Uh, not so much this season, but hey, there was one. But yeah, I'm kind of surprised that the episodes are getting shorter, which either means they overestimated how long they'd be here in the ever after or they got to the point where they're just like we might as well just slow it down a little or trim it down a bit just so that you know we can it, it'll make sense and in, in the next season where they might still be here you know what i mean probably a bit of that and then also they do tend to save up for the last few episodes to do a big like 30 plus minute finale for seasons Right. But uh, to be fair, this is the second to last episode, you know, so uh, unless episode 10 is like 45 minutes, you know, I, it really depends on how far they get here, you know, because there's still a bunch of stuff on the table. The blacksmith, you know, what's going on with Ruby, what's going on with Neo, how they save possibly could save Neo, you know, what the deal is with the cat's connection to the brothers. I mean, you know, come on there's still plenty of stuff that has to be resolved here and let's just say for example here that this episode's basically 16 minutes let's say 15 minutes with without the intro and the uh stuff that they show at the end like the little credits at the end so it's probably about a 14 and a half minute runtime minus the you know credits and stuff so even if next week's episode is like standard tv show episode length of say like 23 minutes uh I don't know if they can finish this in 35 minutes of runtime. I mean, a lot of people think that's that. Oh, that's plenty of time. Well, it really depends on the pacing. So, you know, <laughs> it depends uh, on the pacing and how exactly they are going to go about solving it. All right. So I, I don't know. I think the ever after does have more to give and it, it could have that whole like split, like volume 10 kind of deal where that's like the mid-season is them all coming back to Remnant. Or they could just rush it out the gate here at the end of this season. You know what I mean? But I, I don't know if I agree with that at this point, but this the way this episode ends is going to determine a lot of it. You know, because then we can kind mm -hmm. of gauge like, okay, they got one episode left. So unless they do like a, say like a 45 minute massive thing uh you know we're, we're just gonna have to see as it stands right now it doesn't feel like they're getting out of here this season no yeah so whatever it takes uh we're just gonna have to see uh i really don't have anything else to say going to this we talked it out all last week so let's push some buttons and see what happens this week shall we there goes something what did i do we can figure this out. There's got to be a way to get to the tree. Hello there. 
make you appear upset. Would you be so kind as to tell me how I can help? Perhaps you are hungry? Huh? Uh, no, that's okay. If I can't do much on get wrong with Snap or Groovy, that's the ask. thing that actually that's what I'm pushed here for. her over the edge. What? John's always been her like what major support you? throughout the whole series. We are the genial gems! And we have arrived here to clean up this beautiful land and create something wonderful and pleasing. Yes! All my work! It's not lost! Deep down, she wants nothing more than to return to Remnant and play hero. I just need to cut her out. And she will Or at the very least, find out there. what happened to her mother. <laughs> well, whatever happens to Ruby is up to her. Not you or anyone else. Then I'll put you in the ground. You could put any one of them on and leave Ruby Rose behind. You're uh, sneaking the original song into the soundtrack here. So heavy. It's the only thing I can feel anymore. And it never, ever goes away. The feeling of not being enough. Well, that basically confirms that it was, in fact, Summer's weapon that she was seeing. Yeah. Uh, hey, Summer Rose, how about that? Uh, we'll get to the whole Ruby choosing her weapon thing in a moment. But, uh, in case anybody was wondering if you've uh, heard Summer's voice before, uh, her voice actress has been in a lot of uh, things recently. She's uh, the Todoroki mother in MHA. She's uh, she, she's in Devil's a Part-Timer. She's in all kinds of stuff. She's an ancient Magus bride. She, she plays a lot of mom roles. Yeah, she plays a lot of mom roles. Uh, Carol's mother from Tomo-chan. That was a thing that just wrapped up a couple weeks ago. Um... So, in case you're wondering, and you might have recognized it, that's her! <laughs> so, anybody wondering that, um, got this uh, little flashback sequence that was nice. Um, but as it stands for the episode, maybe they could make it back next episode if it's like a full-length episode? Maybe? Yeah, like I said, they typically save up to like do a like 25 30 minute some episode for the finale usually All right um, and yeah with decent pacing i could see them wrapping up this whole thing at this point because of the direction they took in this one cuz it's basically just confronting the cat resolving ruby's situation and then making it through the door Right, which, I mean, we got. It's still, it's still going to be a fair amount of a fair amount of stuff because we have to. The big thing really is resolving Ruby's situation, but then in the fight with the cat, we've got freaking them kind of more or less fighting a losing battle because it's the cat plus also Neo's super semblance at the moment. Yeah, with John falling off the tree and stuff like that. Which uh. I have something to say about that, but for now, uh, we got hard confirmation that, you know, the Afterins are aware of what happens, you know. Paper pleasers, they're back, and now they don't have to worry about getting lit on fire, or drowning, or evaporating, or anything like that, because now they're gems! And now they're the genial gems. Yeah, now they're the genial gems, they, they can't be lit on fire, they can't get washed away in water, they can't... You know, all the things that John was trying to, you know, prevent. You know what I mean? So they're good. Look at them. They're ready. They can do stuff again. And they don't have to worry about, uh, you know, their limitations. You know? They, uh, they went back to the tree and got their purpose back. And now they can do their purpose even better because, well, now they're just a upgraded form of what they were before. You know? You go from paper to gem, 
I mean, you don't really have a huge amount to worry about, you know what I mean? So, there you go. We we saw the uh, the botanist, you know, not, now he's not like full slug anymore. They want the full metamorphosis route with him. He's now like a, a butterfly guy that can fly around and, you know, there you have it. Um, age was pretty much spot on on the blacksmith. You know, part of the tree, you know. It's, the blacksmith is basically the will of the tree for the most part. So, you know, there you have it. Uh, <laughs> as for the rest of it, you know. I I'm trying to... The cat basically confirmed it outright that uh, Neo can't go through the portal because she has no attachment to Remnant anymore. Because she's handled Ruby, that's the only thing that she wanted. That was it. You know, she has nothing to go back to at this point. Because, you know, bridges burned with, you know, Cinder and Salem and that crew. You know, all she wanted was to, you know, handle Ruby. That was it. You know, she never really thought beyond that. So, I, I still think there might be something more to that, where the this portal or this doorway whatever you want to call it to remnant you got to figure the brothers are aware of not letting say a relic of this world which the cat is to uh, you know allow it to go to another one of their worlds you know what i mean mm -hmm. whether it was a conscious effort on their part or just you know a rule of the universe like hey on the off chance that we make other worlds we shouldn't allow you know, the keepers or the relics of these worlds to go elsewhere. You know what I mean? They have mm -hmm. to be bound to their world. That's it. Yeah. Neo will just have to see how things go the next episode. If they manage to separate the cat from her, she could potentially be brought around, but we'll have to see if it's even possible to separate the cat from her without killing her. Yeah, like I said, I still think the outside of random god shenanigan, whatever you want to call it, uh, the only realistic thing I think is Jean's semblance. You know what I mean? The only t so it's <clears throat> basically there's like three outcomes. It's either they have to kill her because there's they can't separate the cat from her. Um, Jean's semblance manages to oust the cat from her or when ruby comes back the cat willingly leaves her to go try to possess ruby instead right. and fails because he is under the impression that you know well like you said ruby's still here she's in her like uh you know cocoon metamorphosis state where she's you know talking to the blacksmith um so maybe he thinks when she emerges he'll be able to do something but as it stands uh from what we've seen that's she's probably going to have her head on straight I'd assume. Though to be fair, I don't know if becoming Summer Rose is the correct answer to her problem. You know what I mean? Because no, I don't think I don't think she's going to. I think it's going like, to be a not, case of like not physically, but you know what I mean like she 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 placing her mother up on this pedestal and they had this discussion before earlier in this episode where Weiss was mentioning like hey you know, even though we failed a lot, you know, they're still proud of the decisions they made and, you know, they can live with it. You know what I mean? They tried to do their best. And like she said, any hunter, hunters and huntresses have tried and failed in the past. They're no exception. They're not the first ones to fail, you know, and they're not going to be the last. You know, they can't let it weigh on them. But I mean, the, the thing is for them is the fact that they tried. That's the thing that mattered, you know. And I think that's probably the thing Ruby is having the most problem coping with is that, you know, she can't accept the fact that she tried and failed. It, the only thing she's focusing on is the fact that she failed. And that's her problem. It's just the fact that she keeps failing. She's been failing pretty much the entire series. Yeah. Uh, and then John blowing up on her before was the kind of the thing that just finally pushed her over the edge. Um, 
because throughout the whole series, Jean has been like the one person who's always been on her side. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I think the way it's going to more turn out is going to be a case of she's the whole like them leaving it kind of on the cliffhanger of her reaching out to what more or less is confirmed at this point to be Summer's weapon. Uh, it's just going to be more of a case of she's going to actually have some either recollection or some revelation about her mother through the blacksmith. But ultimately uh, decide to basically just become a better version of Ruby. Yeah. As she is now. Yeah. And as it stands, as far as I'm concerned, this is not like some hard confirmation that Summer Rose, you know, appeared in the Ever After and, uh, you know, died here or something or was like remade or anything happened to her. This is just the blacksmith, you know, saying, hey, here's a bunch of possible outcomes for yourself. You know. It's just another case of reflection. It's just like, these are all the possibilities of like what you're thinking about you could be right now. Right. Um, because once again, it's based on it's like the cat said, it's not a place you go, it's a place you know, it's based on your perceptions. Yep, uh, but yeah, there is still some implications here and there that it's possible Summer did travel here at some point, whether she got stuck here or not, who knows. Um, but yeah, this isn't a confirmation in any way that she actually did. Yep. I uh, just wanted to point that out, like, you know, just like last week where we were talking about the whole Ironwood thing, you know, Neo using, you know, Ironwood as a, you know, allegory for Ruby's failures does not necessarily mean that he's dead. You know, Ozpin's not technically dead. He's still technically around, you know, uh, <laughs> same thing with a couple of the others. So it's not, you know. Can't, can't take it as hard, hard confirmation of anything because this is the ever after it's different you know and at a certain point like you know we said before that they're gonna have to start playing by this world's rules you know and they saw with the paper pleasers that hey you know if they just kind of let them do their thing it turns out okay because look they're back they're better than ever so it'll be interesting to see if uh yeah, I agree with you that, you know, Ruby's probably going to reach for the weapon and have some sort of, you know, revelation. Um, John getting knocked off the tree, probably in a similar situation, you know. Um, there's going to be something with him. Uh, it's not just him getting knocked off the tree and that's it. You know what I mean? We've seen stuff like that in any other storytelling. He's going to come back somehow with a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing that I'm questioning at this point is if the cat killed Alex and Lewis is the one who went back to Remnant, what's the deal with the story in the fairy tale? You know? Did Lewis write it then? That, yeah, that's the implication there is that Lewis wrote it, but he wrote himself out of the story to make it about Alex, who didn't make it. Right, fair enough. As but a, we still we still don't know how much truth there is even to that because the cat is a similar to Oz the cat is in a lot of ways this uh, not only a re an allegory to the relics in this freaking world but they've hit the Ozpin stand in of this world too and that he's the habitual liar and the keeper of like all the knowledge right but it's just kind of weird because I guess we haven't heard the entirety of that story so uh I believe the way that story ends is Alex coming back home. So since it's a fairy tale, of course, it's going to have a happy ending. Right? You know, Lewis wouldn't write the whole truth because he would know that his sister never came back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it, when it comes to fairy tales, I always have a happy ending, not necessarily the actual truth. Um, at some point, I kind of want to go through here and see if like there's any like random... Uh, weapons in this line out lineup they're like a shout out to something you know what i mean uh 
you know, kind of look like a buster sword out there. Maybe like yeah, Ichigo's okay. original Zompak toe back there. Maybe something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's quite the lineup. But, uh, yeah. I, I As it stands right now, I'm going to call it a 50-50 shot that they actually leave the Ever After episode. You know what I mean? They're going to have to pack a lot in. You know? Well, we got the Alex and Lewis resolution. Okay. You know. At this point, since the cat is devious and is what it is, it, it makes sense. You know, Lewis is the one who made it back. He's the one that who wrote the fairy tale, you know, about his sister. Okay. Um... As for making it home, we're just going to have to see. Because according to the cat, you need to have an attachment to Remnant. Mm -hmm. you know. And Ruby still has an attachment to Remnant. She still wants to find out what happened to her mom. You know, That's been like the, the driving force for her character for the entire series. So she's never not going to have that. You know, the rest of them, of course, they all have attachment back to Remnant. So that's that's whatever. Um, and as for Neo... I don't know what they can do for her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's really just going to kind of come down to which of the three outcomes happens with like her and the cat. And then from there, seeing if there's any way to actually turn her around to get her to actually come with them. Right. As it stands, those three options are the ones that probably make the most sense. Like I'm not, when it comes to like, probable odds i don't think they're gonna kill her straight up because that's probably just gonna punch the cat out of her anyway you know what i mean um when it comes to storytelling and stuff like that the one that makes the most sense is ruby coming out of you know her cocoon and him going oh there's ruby now i'm gonna go after her how many times have we seen that before you know what i mean that, that, that's like a you know uh, a big time use in fantasy you know what i mean yeah I, like that's what i also see as the most likely situation too it's just gonna be she's gonna she's going to emerge he's going to jump out of neo and try to jump into her but not be able to because she'll have refound her resolve with whatever happens in here right and uh as that stands i don't have a problem with it i would personally prefer Jean character growth and him using his semblance to do a thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's nothing wrong with either of those two options. The killing Neo one is just kind of like, really? It's on the table, but I don't think they'll do it. Just realistically speaking here, from their the standpoint. Most, but, yeah, the most likely situation I see, see situations I see with Neo is either going to be they're going to find some way to convince her to like turn her hatred to Salem, or it's going to be a, just a case of she survives, but they just leave her in the ever after. Cause she just basically says, fuck it. I'm just going to stay here. Yeah. I mean, she could just end up staying there. Um, the whole, uh, turning her hatred on Salem thing. It's kind of like what we saw in God of War Ragnarok. It's like, yeah, Freya, you know, Kratos killed your son, but you gotta remember, this is all Odin's fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? In this case, Salem is Odin, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, like... without Salem, there is no Roman dealing with them. You know what I mean? Well, it actually, the more direct target for Neo's hatred would be Cinder, because not only did Cinder betray her and throw her into the Ever After, uh, but also Cinder is the one directly responsible for Roman's death because she's the one who who strong-armed him into being in that situation in the first place where he could get eaten by a Grim. Yeah, fair enough. But, you know, those two, you know, same thing for the most part. Uh, <laughs> we all know what Salem is using Cinder for and she's willingly going along with it because, well... We all saw why last season. They had that whole freaking montage in the hotel. Need we need we say more? But uh Cinder's also got a diluted sense of friggin' uh destiny where she basically believes that she's guaranteed to come out of this with the powers. Yeah. 
And she's not, but you know, it's, that is what it is. But uh, as it stands, it, it would be interesting to see them have, uh, since we already have Emerald on their side now, um, you know, the fact that Mercury is probably on the table after the weird bro trip that he's going on with Tyrion. You know what I mean? Um, just yeah, having a, a bunch of the stuff. So, Tyrion's never going to switch sides. He's yeah, no, he's going to go out on on you know for for the on his shield for Salem. So that's that is what it is. Tyrion, yeah, no, Tyrion is the whole. Tyrion is based on the Aesop's fable of the scorpion and the toad, and that the entire premise to that story is that some people are just irredeemable. Yep. Tyrion is the epitome of there is no saving him. He is going to just keep destroying stuff until someone destroys him. Right. Which at this point, probably going to be Mercury if we just put it through there, because the last time we saw him, you know, he had probably my favorite just one-off line from last volume where he's walking out of the room and he's like, Emerald, you're crazy. Salem's not going to destroy the world. And then Tyrion just shows up and he's like, of course he's gonna destroy the world what the heck's wrong with you <laughs> and he just yeah. he just has that face like say what now <laughs> yeah mercury i could definitely still see coming around especially now that emerald has because as much as they like are at odds with each other at times they're still uh pretty damn they have each other's backs yeah so uh you know and emerald even had that line last season it's like hey you guys aren't allowed to give up now that I finally switch sides, okay? Stop it. <laughs> I'm not joining your team just so that you can give up. So, uh, yeah, that's there's a bunch of definitely interesting stuff in the future of the series here. But uh, as for right now, they could probably pull it off with another really good pacing episode, and, and they go and they make it back because they're at the portal. You know what I mean? They're there. So yeah, I feel like. I feel like unless there is some shenanigans where they get kicked out of the tree like I threw out as a possibility earlier on the next episode they're intending on ending the ever after bit right it's just a matter of can they resolve it effectively yeah and at the end of the day a little bit of meta, meta knowledge from behind they did say volume 9 was going to be weird, meaning the Alice in Wonderland stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but also they haven't talked about the thing at season 10 at all, so it could still be a case of season 10 being weird too. Yeah, fair enough. But, you know, um, since they had this planned out, you know, they, they probably know exactly where the story is going. So either way, um, at some point, we're going to delve through all these weapons and see if there's any, like, random shout outs to just random other media you know what i mean uh there's a couple big shields back there they, they did a pretty big interesting lineup so uh i kind of want to see that but uh, we're not going to do that in the middle of this video but uh we'll, we'll probably talk about it next week um just as like an extra thing but um yeah uh you know it, it, it was a solid episode um had a lot of uh growth for what it was and, uh, you know, you called it on the blacksmith part, unsurprising. Um, we got all the hard confirmations. There's not a huge amount to, to wrap up at this point. Uh, so, I mean, I'm expecting big finale, you know, like they always do, you know, I mean, last, uh, last volume's finality was pretty impressive, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm expecting Pretty much the same thing so a bunch of stuff on the table should be fun i don't expect it to be nearly as big of a deal this season because this season is still a bit more of a side season yeah but you gotta figure they're still gonna do a thing because they haven't had uh they haven't had any like really epic grandiose like action sequence they've been scattered throughout here and there like the the, the chess fight you know the stuff with the jabba walker but nothing like um, 
you know, big time, like the Penny and Cinder fight at Amity or, you know, that whole sequence with like the, uh, like the jet bikes in, you know, basically like pod racing that they did. So, uh, I expect something fairly large with the cat fight, you know what I mean? And Ruby. Yeah. As, uh, I assume, say we go the route of, well, let's just say one way or another, the cat's going to get punched out of me. Okay. We're going to see the cat fight on his own. You know, not controlling a body. Which he's another creation of both creation and destruction because it's black and white, meaning the silver eyes probably work on him. Yeah. So anyway, that's all I got. Looking forward to next week. Um, I believe after that, there's they're doing like some Ruby Justice League crossover movie thing that we're going to yeah like watch and talk about because that's how they set it up for release so there's gonna be two movies i believe but it's basically just they're doing a movie adaptation of the spin-off comics that they did right so that should be interesting but as it stands uh end of volume nine should be interesting um if i have to make a hardcore prediction i'm gonna lean on the edge of them getting out now you know yeah, this definitely seems to be where they're going with this last few episodes. Like I said, the only way I see them actually staying is just if something abruptly makes them have to leave the tree kind of thing and resolve something else. Yep. But they haven't really left anything behind. The only thing that's kind of like randomly outstanding is the Jabberwocky, right? Nothing really else. You know what I mean? They, they've been to each acre that was shown off, um, you know, uh, unless they want to do something weird. But I, I'm thinking they make it out now, you know, especially with the history of, you know, we, we know how the writing goes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it did feel kind of up in the air, but even with these, like, say, 15 minutes that this episode was, they've pretty much written themselves into their making it out. You know what I mean? Because very rarely do you make it to the portal and then get kicked back to the beginning. You know what I mean? I, I, I think it'd be kind of weird if they decided to go that route, especially if Ruby finds herself and she has a resolve back and they move on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it'd be kind of weird if it's like, well, uh, congratulations, you made it to the portal. Ruby's got a resolve, but now you got to start from world one, one again. It's like, why would we do that when we already know that, you know, it's a place you know. They don't have to make it back to the tree. They could just, you know what I mean? It's like, well, we know how to get there. So <laughs> there, there's really no point in them kicking them out, you know? Anyway, that's all I got. You got anything else, Age? No. Alrighty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond how you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for our animated night in the dojo. And this was Ruby, Volume 9, Episode 9. Got one more to go. See how this uh, season finale takes us. So have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing that subscribe and like button. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time and see you next time.